All right. Welcome to the Sick Folks of Cinema, guys. I am your host for this episode, Keith Graber. Uh, with us is Tech Services, a.k.a. Christina Ceballos. What up? Um, we got Stefan Bowman comedy, which uh, one of those words doesn't belong in his name. I don't know. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, He's not a Bowman. <laughs> <laughs> He's pure comedy, though. And give it up for the very funny Heather Rogue. Um, she's not funny today, but she'll be funnier as, as time goes on. No, I'm not going to be funny today. Uh, <laughs> guys, I'm outside freezing. I'm in my, my uh, Kevin McAllister gear. Um, got I was going to say, you kind of look like Kevin McAllister. Yeah. <laughs> Merry right Christmas there. out there in uh, podcast land. Um, yes, Merry Christmas. And why don't we go around and talk about our feelings? No, let's talk about what we've been watching lately. Christina, what have you been watching? What have you been up to? Oh, man, it's Christmas time. So I've just been watching as many Christmas movies as I could get my hands on. Oh, I love them. Like, let's see if I go down the list. The two movies, I watched two new movies that I had never seen before. I watched Abominable. Abominable. And mm -hmm. that was very, very cute. That was super cute. And they did the DreamWorks thing where yeah, that's a Pixar, there was some right? hilarious. No, it was a DreamWorks. DreamWorks. It's a Universal because um, yeah, they have Everest at Universal mm -hmm. now as one of the characters. But they did that thing that I love that DreamWorks does, where they throw pure hilarious, like hilarious comedy into mm -hmm. it. They had, the one thing that got me was the whooping snakes, and they're just these snakes that just go whoop 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 whoop. <laughs> <laughs> it was great and then i also watched uh emmett otter's jug band i'd never seen this jim oh, henson before. Yeah. yeah and it was very cute very heartwarming we love we love a movie about poor christmas i love it but then you know we watched <laughs> you've never what? seen that before i never seen that before no yeah. like my boyfriend grew up watching it because mm -hmm. that was his mom's favorite christmas movie and i was like i'd never seen it i'm down to watch it so we watched it at like 2 a.m on Christmas well technically it was like Christmas Christmas Eve going into Christmas and it was super cute super cute then you know the traditional ones Nightmare Before Christmas mm -hmm. the Grinch South Park episodes <laughs> SNL some Red Skeleton uh, Red Skeleton so besides yeah. besides the Nightmare Before Christmas anything horror adjacent or like are you going strictly like uplifting Christmas fun stuff no I thought about watching Gremlins, but I just never got around to it. Like I almost want, I want, there were a couple, like I had ideas. I just never got around to it. Cause I was like, I want to feel happy and cheery. <laughs> 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 like I, I got my horror kicks in when I watched our movie of the week and I was like, you know, I'll go, I'll go back and I'll revisit. Cause the holiday season isn't quite over for me yet. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but yeah. All right, All right Stefan, what, what have you been watching? Uh, the most Christmassy one that I uh, that has horror that I watched was uh, the 2019 Black Christmas mm -hmm. uh, because I wanted to really see, uh, you know, all the gripes about it, you know, because I got a lot of people saying a lot of bad stuff about it. It was OK. It was was okay. it better than the one we reviewed? Um, I could see where some people might think that mm -hmm. I could see that. Um, like me but but you know i i have a i have a strict thing that i that i follow and it uh drives me nuts um and i'll say what that is uh, i don't like pg-13 horror mm -hmm. if my horror is not rated r or unrated or a director's cut I, I have a problem so you do like pg horror then okay good to know oh yeah definitely oh man <laughs> g-rated that's the best i feel oh like. oh disney horror Woo! Goosebumps, let's go. Ernest scared stupid. Oh my oh, god. Oh, I love that movie. Never, never <laughs> been able to get that movie. <laughs> um, but you or know the witches? Oof. No. no, no <laughs> the no, original no. one. Yes. Well, I was an earnest nerd when I was a kid. I love it. We are not earnest movies. First of all, we're not admitting that the new witches exists in this podcast, just so everyone I'm putting my foot down. That <laughs> shit is not it is You're not like, Ro Robert Zemeckis, suck it. So um, have that new Willy Wonka movie doesn't exist i know it's been out for decades <laughs> but you know the black christmas 2019 is i it's a once over and then i got to home alone 1990 watch that watch the grinch Classic. original 1966 
I watched my uh, one of my favorite movies from 2015 from Denny Villeneuve uh, called Sicario. I love that fucking movie, the original. I mm-hmm. uh, watched Wonder Woman with my daughter. Also watched Home Alone with my daughter. And I watched the original Grinch with my daughter. And then I did uh, 007 Spectre, uh, Midnight Sky, which is a new uh, directed George Clooney movie. That is that just any came good? Out. It's actually pretty good. It's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. It's worth a once over. I uh, got to the Disney Soul, the 2021 that came out on Christmas, as well as the Wonder Woman 1984. Soul was great. Wonder Woman 1984 is I uh, worth a, again a <laughs> once over, as me and my buddy call it. And then I got addicted to the Flight Attendant on HBO Max, which is actually pretty fucking awesome. Uh huh. Well, okay. So uh, follow up question, Stefan. Are you a time traveler? How every time we do this, we're like, what have you been watching? It's like, oh, this is 168 hours of viewing that I've been doing. <laughs> he has How a time you... turner like Hermione Granger. She he just manipulates time, just doubles up. Just to watch movies, not to not to get better grades or anything. <laughs> yeah, like he, he found some trick where he watches them in his sleep and it's like inception. It's, you know, there was I... time now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, what I do is I try to if I don't watch them with my daughter, if I'm not playing video games or I'm not working on comedy, uh, I'm a I'm a creature of the night, so I I have a really hard time going to bed. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what I do to reward myself, you know, if I'm you know promoting podcast stuff or promoting comedy stuff, writing, studying, whatever, I'll reward myself afterwards. Either I try to do it before, but uh, that's really hard. Otherwise, I don't get shit done. So I'll mm-hmm. do all that stuff, and then as a reward, I'll watch a movie or two, and then go back to you know getting stuff done. Yeah, makes sense. There you go. Okay, Heather, you're up. Let's My hear. My turn. It. Okay. <laughs> What's the sick <laughs> shit you've been watching? So we'll start with the Christmas horror movies. I did not watch any regular Christmas movies. All of the Christmas movies I watched were horror movies. I um, did that for you guys. I covered that box. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Um, for, for those who are just listening to this podcast and not watching on YouTube, thank you, because I don't like being seen without makeup on. But also, I'm wearing black. I'm not the biggest. I'm a little bit of a ba cumba kind of grinchy soul, you know, a little bit. But I, watched, I got a little sh- just don't <laughs> just let it go. Don't don't <laughs> don't get stuck on that. Um, so the first Christmas movie I watched was uh, Better Watch Out. Have you guys heard of this? This is so good. It is. I, I love it. Told you. Told you. It was so good. Oh, that's a fucking awesome movie. Oh, my God. It, you think it's going to be one thing, and then it's like, hmm, not quite what you thought it was going to be, like, pretty early on. But then you're thinking, so what is this? And then it's just, uh, yeah. It's something um, else. Yeah. I highly, I highly recommend it. It seems like it's a very grounded story. It's not supernatural FYI. So if you're really looking for supernatural, this is a more grounded story, but it's definitely fucking. It's tasty. Yeah. It's tasty. It's, it's got, it's got some, um, yeah, it's, it's like, it's not a super scary movie, but it's like, you're really, it's, it's, it's a kind of a psychological fuck with you kind of movie yeah it's um, fun it's a fun one it's called better watch out mm-hmm. yeah hmm. it's basically what you think it's gonna be is that there's a babysitter and her um the, the kid being babysat and there's like some kind of home invasion thing going on is what you think it's gonna be mm-hmm. um the next movie i want to talk about is called dead end now this one is more of a black comedy than a horror movie for sure. And it's extremely, uh, like, it's almost absurd and surreal, where you're kind of watching it, like, the comedy sort of keeping you going, but mostly you're just like, what the hell is going on? You know what I mean? <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and then when you find out what's going on, you might hate it, you might like it. But um, there's, there's just, it's a very interesting movie. Um, and it was watchable. It didn't bore me. So that's why I'm mentioning <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed the experience of watching it. It was not like, like there's definitely a couple of bad scenes in it, you know, but it's not that bad. Neither is Better Better Watch Out actually is not graphic at all, in my opinion. Um, the next one I want to mention is No One Lives. Yep, mm-hmm. I mentioned that. Couple, um, this, is not movie. No. <laughs> this is not a Christmas movie. No. This is not. Chris you, Evans is fucking you, uh, awesome in that. Luke Evans? Did you? The Luke um, Evans, sorry. Did you recommend this in a couple episodes? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, oh, yeah. I'm going to mention it again because I watched it. It's and it, awesome. again, kind of like 
kind of like better watch out. You think it's going to be one thing. And then it turns out to be something very, very different in a very, you know, no one lives and better watch out are extremely similar movies in my opinion. Yeah. Um, yeah. In a way. Yeah. There's major differences though. Like for one thing, I'm a little bit less empathetic of the people in no one lives that are getting murdered. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, like a lot of things are very similar. Uh, and then uh, another horror movie I watched, just because it's like, it's sitting there on Tubi every time I open Tubi and I'm like, fine, I'll watch you. And it's yeah. called, just because it's like this old lady's face just staring at you and she's like balding and shit. So it's just like, okay, this is, I need to watch this so it gets off of my recommended movies. It's called The Taking of Deborah Logan. Have you guys heard of this yeah, one? I've seen, I think yeah. I've, seen that one. I've seen that one, I think. It's a kind of a possession movie. Also not a Christmas movie, but I did watch it. I'm mentioning it probably the worst out of all of the movies i just mentioned maybe <laughs> on par with dead end no it's worse than dead end it's not as what like it's so bad the freaking the like it's a found footage movie which is fine if it's done right you know what i mean but when yeah. it's like done in a way where it's like oh we just want to like make this like i couldn't watch anything action oriented because the editing was so bad and choppy you can't tell what's going on and that's on purpose, right? Because then they don't have to like actually shoot a scene. <laughs> they can just use the implication of what's going on. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's that like, bugs me the most about found footage stuff. Right, so it definitely falls into that trap. I don't recommend the taking of Deborah Logan. Yeah, um, it's not It's not good. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, was in, it was kind of interesting here and there, but honestly, if you want a movie like that, The Last Exorcism, is also a found footage movie that does the found footage possession thing correctly. So I would yeah. recommend that one and not this one. And that's it for me. <laughs> yeah, Better Watch Out is awesome. And uh, uh, No One Lives, me and my buddies drove out to when they had, cause it had a very, very limited release. And uh, we drove out far to go see that one. And uh, yeah. All of these movies are on Tubi, by the way. You can watch them for free. Um, mm. Another Christmas movie I was planning to watch was, uh, I think it's called like The Day of the Beast or The Night of the Beast or something. So mm -hmm. I, I never got around to that one. Yeah. Um, you can always count on Heather for like a psychotic rabbit hole. That's You got to check out that one too, uh, Keith. No one lives. Yeah. I, I do the same thing. Okay. So what I've been watching, uh, I, I do the same thing kind of as Heather and a combination of Stefan. So my like late at night are my boob tube hours. Like I don't, I don't get done work and then sit in front of the TV during the day. I'm like, I always want to be doing something. So I'm, I'm yep. never like sitting around on the couch. So it, when it's like midnight and that's when I'm like, you know what? I, I can watch like three or four movies and then stay up till like 4am. It's weird. I don't know. Yes, why. Oh my God. And yes, so, but, and then sometimes I go down this like psycho rabbit hole. Like, uh, so I watched Netflix documentary on the Ripper one night. Oh, how um, was that? It was, it was, okay, so it was a little uh, freaky and, uh, you know, it was a serial killer. It was a documentary. So knowing that it's all thing, real things that happen is a different kind of, you know, vibe when you're watching that. And yes. I'm high, it's the middle of the night, and I binged <laughs> all four episodes in one night. Ooh, I bet you were getting paranoid, huh, Keith? I know, but I had crazy serial killer dreams. Um, and then the next night I watched Red Dragon, which is the... Uh, the remake, right? For the Manhunter? sequel to, uh, or no, it's, I think it's, a, is it a prequel to Lecter? Yeah, it's, uh, it comes yeah. before uh, Sounds of the Lambs, and yeah, that's the and remake because the original one was called Manhunter. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. needless to say, my wife is terrified of me at this point. Um, <laughs> she's like, please, you don't get any more pics. <laughs> what are you up to? Yeah. No, she's asleep, but, you know, like she, she can hear it and she's like, what the fuck are you watching? I don't know. <laughs> Stefan, so yeah, the it was like in the 80s, right? Manhunter, but that was also based off of a book, and I thought the book was called Yeah, Red the book Dragon. is called Red Dragon, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the Manhunter has I don't remember the guy's name, but he's from, he's the original main actor from the original CSI. Mm -hmm. Uh and then it was directed by Michael Mann, who uh did uh was it majority of the Miami Vice stuff in the very beginning mm -hmm. when it was on TV. And then you know he's made a lot of amazing movies and then some not so amazing movies. <laughs> yeah. oh but to answer your question christina the ripper it was a good documentary but the story of the ripper it, it's honestly it, it it's so weird how uh 
the different uh, plot lines come together, like the different stories that that um, sort of were a catalyst for how this thing turned out. It's mm-hmm. there's police ineptitude, and there's also like there's a a, a layer of like feminism um, that plays into it really uh, strongly, and so basically they mischaracterize this um, serial killer out of like basic misogyny, you know. So. Mm. They, they basically said that uh, this killer only attacks prostitutes and because they were they were categorizing these women as prostitutes when they shouldn't have been. They were just maybe poor and in a bad neighborhood or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was like all that. So there's- You know what? Netflix does a really good job with these docuseries because I, le- I love watching the Netflix docuseries. The other one that sounds that, this is giving me it has the same vibe is um abducted in plain sight Mm -hmm. like that docuseries like you go through and there's all these different plot lines and all these different people who know the man like the neighbor that they were talking about and you just get this sense of like what the fuck were the police doing like Mm -hmm. what were these parents thinking like who made these decisions? Like you got like what led you to go down this hole? And everybody's like, all right, we're just gonna jump on board. You know, like Netflix yeah. does a really good job exposing every nook and cranny of these investigations, and like really gets into it. Oh yeah, no, definitely. I uh, I highly recommend if you like that one, Keith. You got to go check out the Killing Season on uh, on Amazon Prime. Yeah, I That's think that might be, be in my queue in my list. But that uh, yeah, one, I like I hell, dude, I would even put that as a pick mm-hmm. uh, if if uh, it's something we were allowed to even have, you know, one that way uh, randomly. The whole at some season, point. yeah. They just been, yeah. For for you, that's a pick. Like, no, no, no. It's not. It's not several episodes. It's just one two hour or two and a half hour thing. Oh, okay. If the, yeah, that's and fine. it's uh, it, like how Heather was describing. You know, no one lives and better watch out and you know how they have a twist or it's something you don't expect like this documentary you're seeing the trailer and you're like okay it's this and then you watch it and once you're done you're like fuck because it's not i was mistaken oh yeah no because it's it's about the gilgo beach murders but it ends up uh going in like (laughs) it's like the matrix of serial killing uh but in a documentary is the best way I can describe it. And then after you watch it, it probably won't, that won't even be a great explanation, but it's one of those that like, first, I don't like, I don't want to get too much into it because if I try, it'll spoil things in there that are just like, and, and it's real. That's the thing that's fucking nuts. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the best part about like the true crime docu series or like documentaries is it's like the, this all happened. This all happened in real life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And one of the major things that ends up being our problem, not to get too sidetracked, I'll say this really quick, is uh, all the different law enforcements that don't communicate with each each other due to ego uh, or uh, claiming it's unprofessional. Like Mm -hmm. if other facets of the law enforcement have evidence of similar crimes, you need to be linking these crimes because they might most likely be uh, linked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And and. uh... I mean, that's a whole other podcast too, um, <laughs> but okay. The other thing I was watching that I binged late Ooh. at night, uh, nerd alert. I finished the, the last season of the clone wars that I never watched. Oh, nice. 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 Cause they, they keep on like, I don't know. They keep breadcrumbing everyone. They're like, Hey, how about another season? You know? And it's like, why, where was this when the, when it was on? I don't know. They did that with season six, I believe. Mm. And then season seven. Okay. Um, but it, it basically finishes Ahsoka's story and ties it in with the Order 66. Did you guys see any of the, uh, dealing with what you said with the Star Wars there, did you guys see any of the stuff for J.J. Abrams' original script where the story was supposed to go? Because Ahsoka was going to be in the movie. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, well, she, they and do a good job. Ryan of, Johnson took her out. Yeah, they do that a good job of, off. of putting her in um, Mandalorian. Mandalorian you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, I was uh, really happy to see her there. I oh, was yeah. like, my least, I don't know if you guys saw that uh, season seven of the Clone Wars, but my least favorite part of it was the whole, the two sisters that she was hanging out with. And I was just like, what? Uh, you know, it was just like, <laughs> it was like Facebook drama. If it were <laughs> a fucking Star Wars card. <laughs> oh, like, you funny. bitches sort it out, please. I want to see lasers. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, if they would have kept the JJ's original script, uh, Keith, uh, services heather 
I think all of us would like the whole three movies. Like the stuff that I heard that Ryan Johnson actually took out Mm -hmm. uh, really blew my mind that they would even take out. There was another Sith bad guy that was taken out, okay, called the Knot, or I think her name was Knot. And like in uh, the whole, uh, what is it? The whole Brotherhood of Ren or something like that. They kind of had them in there briefly in the last one. Mm -hmm. But yeah, not it was very, very, very brief. yeah, and then got wiped out like like retarded fast. And so his version, like the stuff, the stuff that got leaked, I'm glad it leaked. It makes the last two movies just awful if you read what he had, dude. Yeah. Which I well, I'm, yeah. Speaking speaking of failed attempts to thread yes. different storylines together, <laughs> um, guys, we're reviewing this week uh, a Christmas horror story directed by it has three directors right grant harvey stephen hoban and brett sullivan mm-hmm. um featuring william shatner okay let's my unpack favorite this. person <laughs> i'm gonna let you guys unpack it because no surprise to anyone i loved this movie i thought yeah. it was it was i thought it was highly entertaining and there I were can... certain things that i liked and i didn't like but i liked more things than i disliked you know yeah. I enjoyed some of it a lot and Thanks. some of it I was waiting for the other stories to come back around, you know, kind of like Game of Thrones where it's like I'm watching yeah. it for these arcs, not for these ones. Yeah, <laughs> I get that 100%. Well, I've discovered something important about myself. Um, I don't like anthologies. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got to see Creepshow then, bro. Creepshow's Here's are the amazing. thing. Okay. This this reminds me of okay way back when there was an NPR story about a study they did um, on multitasking and you know there's this debate about who's better at multitasking men or women and the answer may surprise you it's fucking nobody humans are bad at multitasking right so pretty much what you're just doing is stopping one thing and starting another and both things suffer because they're you're not giving that your full focus and I feel like all these storylines have that effect. Like if I, I, I want the one movie based on one of these storylines. And my favorite was the Santa versus the Santa killing all his elves. That was great. But that was really, really good. I I did enjoy. I can't say that I enjoyed that one probably the most. I think my favorite one was uh, the Krampus. I liked the way that they did that. I really liked how they portrayed like that it was like the spirit could basically if you had it was the uh, it was literally anti santa claus like if you had enough anger and hate you could literally just embody the krampus spirit i thought that was i sure. thought that was dumb. you know i just want i just want to know if greg nicotero's retarded brother was the guy who did the makeup for most of this movie because i i didn't like really the makeup on anything in this movie i I didn't think like, it was too bad. Um, Krampus didn't bother me. The makeup. Oh, oh! I just thought it was a wrestler, and and yeah. Oh. <laughs> See, okay. That one of the things that I will say that bothered me, and I told Keith this last night. We were all chatting on Christmas, but I didn't like that. Okay, they, the North Pole, corporate had a really cool outside feel. Santa Claus looked like a badass, like Norse fucking WWE wrestler with the single braid. I was like, okay, this is badass. Why did all of his elves look like Starbucks baristas? Because <laughs> they why were. Did it, why did it look like I Spoiler just rolled alert. up to the North, like the North Pole and was like, I want a caramel macchiato. And these elves were mm-hmm. like, you got it, buddy. Like you couldn't even tell they were elves unless you like looked at their ears. Like everything yeah. else, it was just like a black visor, a t-shirt, and an apron. And I was well, like, why, why would, why would they do that to the elves? I that's wouldn't why, even doubt. Yeah, sorry. That's the, the spoiler alert. That's why the ending made so much sense. Oh <laughs> yeah, actually, that makes way more sense when you think about it like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't think about it like that until you pointed that out as like that was like playing into the big reveal at the end i was like oh i guess that i mean yeah and i don't know if that was purposely done because think about uh krampus looked nothing like you know 
Steve or whatever the fucking guy was, the manager. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Krampus's horns were. Krampus literally- didn't have a bow tie and a name tag. Santa. You know, like oh, yeah. really. But I, I, I will say this. Okay, so the the ending. This was like uh, sort of like the sixth sense in a way, where like the ending was everything to this movie, and and it, it didn't necessarily save it for me. Um, I'm just okay with this movie. It wasn't a great one for me, but um, to me, it it was the best part of watching this was the ending. Yeah, I, I definitely agree as far as like the Santa story goes. Not as far as every story goes. Like the Changeling story, I felt had a terrible ending and a really good middle where it was like, it was ba- like last week or whatever, we watched The Children, right? Which was a terrible movie. And I feel like the Changeling took that kind of premise and actually did it better so I was like kind of into watching them I agree because the biggest difference between the changeling story and the children the movie that we watched last week was I feel like the director of the children didn't actually let the kids act meanwhile this kid I was like damn like that's mm-hmm. a fay. like i could see that changeling energy like big changeling energy yeah I, that little seven-year-old crazy. kid just carried that whole thing you know yeah. and like he, he did so good and he's not even like a white child which last week on, on on the children i was talking about how scared i am of white children but <laughs> in spite of not being white he still freaked the fuck out of me you know <laughs> it, that, like that's just yeah. a testimony to how good he was yeah like talk about understanding your character because if you look into changeling lore that's it played into exactly how they are exactly down to the like the one scene that got me was when the dad was threatening him with the belt and you saw his little try it go ahead Mm -hmm. and he got a few in there and then spoiler alert then you see the way that the dad was killed Mm-hmm. by this changeling and you're like see that's some fey shit that's how mean these little fuckers can be <laughs> like mm-hmm. that's accurate that so, was probably my my second that. favorite storyline was was this whole thing yeah. i will say that my least favorite storyline was the school yeah absolutely I, yeah it had some good like scare jumps and yeah. like it got me really good in like the found footage that they're watching with the I, cop you know, and that you know I don't go tumbling down. I was like, oh, yeah, out of body. You know I don't normally go for startles. It's a cheap scare, but that startle in the beginning that was that was good. And it usually comes down to like editing. Also, that that's mm-hmm. a, that's an important part of it. And it, they got me. They got me on that startle when the when the when they were doing like the the exposition about the cop being in there and somebody came down from the roof. Yeah, the- I'm telling you. When I tell you, I. It got me so good that my soul left my body for a split second. I was like, Ooh! like I reached over and grabbed Ed and I was like, oh God, that got me. That got me real good. Ed was like, what? <laughs> yeah. What do you want? Yeah, he's um, like, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. I consider myself pretty stoic. And I also had a little bit of a yeah. <laughs> kind of moment. Yeah. Uh, I, I, but I, I got to say though, that is one story where I feel like we lost something that story wasn't given uh i'm sorry the the changeling story wasn't given enough like there wasn't enough time to build up tension to uh kind of develop all of the mom's options and her you know feelings towards the situation and like confusion and like you know it just se- seemed rushed and yeah. that, that could have been a whole movie Absolutely. Although if it was a whole movie, we might not have liked it as it's almost like it could have been a whole episode of like a horror show. You know what I mean? Um, I agree. I think it relied. See, I liked it because I knew what a changeling was. mm -hmm. Like as soon as they pulled that kid out of the tree, I was like, bitch, that ain't your that that's not your son. Oh, no. Yeah, I knew that right away when when it came. And Ed was like, I don't know what a changeling is. So I was like, pause, let me briefly explain. They and then went back it. to watching. They explained it in the movie. Like, I didn't know if it was going to be a changeling until the it turned out to be one. I knew what changelings were, but I just kind of liked the whole mystery of like, you lost your kid in the woods, you found them, and something's wrong, you know? And I like kind of like, I don't know if they're going with the changeling story yet. I just know that th- this kid is screwed up, you know? Yeah. 
yeah. we're used to getting mystique from x-men or something as a changeling uh yeah as someone who can ma <laughs> magically but um yeah well, i, I think they yeah, yeah I, sorry, I like the I, lore I knew, that they yeah. used in there yeah i knew it wasn't normal when he came out of the tree <laughs> yeah, but it, as soon as they were like they found him in the tree i was like this is like very classic changeling mm -hmm. vibes and i think if they would have gone into it a little bit more i wouldn't have liked it but i remember saying like as soon as that story started and the dad was like come on nobody's out here let's just hop this fence that very clearly says no trespassing i looked at ed and i was like if you ever fucking pull this shit on me, I will let your ass go into those woods and I don't care if you never come out. I am not doing that ever. When when I saw that no trespassing sign, I was I didn't even think about changelings. I was like redneck with a shotgun. You don't fuck around. Like, dong, I, dong, 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 dong. I've been in the woods with a no trespassing <laughs> sign and like, no, sir, I'm out of here. You know, like. <laughs> exactly. I I have to say though, my least favorite storyline I think was the the Krampus family thing. I didn't like that one either. Those were the two stinkers. Really, it was just that cheap was... and and like, oh, all these people are hateable, so Krampus right. is gonna get them, you know. That's and it's like, okay, the main problem sure. is just yeah. the characters freaking sucked for that for that yeah. one. Yeah. I think they could I have dropped. Like... Go ahead, Christina. I was gonna say I didn't like the initial like story of it. I did like at the very end when she's standing there in the mansion and she's talking to her aunt, like you knew this would happen and you intentionally sent my shitty ass family, including me away so that he would get us and you would be safe. That's why you like, you basically sacrificed us and you just saw her transform. I was like, okay, that that was a little bit of a, a redeeming quality for me. Yeah, that yeah. element of it was pretty cool. The idea What's, that anybody could be Krampus. Yeah. Yeah. That so what? So she cool. lived with a guy who was Krampus. Is that how mm -hmm. that worked? He yeah. He was so. He, it's not that he was Krampus. He was so angry and upset about the way that the apparently they threw they threw that kid under the bus. They were like when the teenage girl was talking about her daughter and her, her brother in the church. And she was like, he killed Oh, pets. don't you notice that all of our pets go missing? Mm -hmm. What do you think happens to him? I was like, Oh shit. They went right for like, he's a little psychopath. <laughs> but the fact yeah. that he, that the little kid disrespected the spirit of Krampus so much infuriated him and angered him so much that he actually turned into the spirit of Krampus. Yeah, and, and that lady, her their great aunt knew, and that's why they were like, "Okay," she was like, "You, sh you guys should go. Go ahead. You guys should not be here anymore." Yeah, I will say this: I, I, I see the where people go with calling Krampus the anti Santa, but it, it's to me, it's not. It's sort of like their interests are still aligned. They both punish you for being bad or having, uh, you know for not appreciating christmas they do the exact same thing they just one does it way more extreme than the other it's kind of just yeah. the paradox of satan right it's like well if satan's evil why does he punish evil people you know yeah yeah that's for as far as the krampus man i don't know i i wasn't for this uh goosebump cw uh <laughs> makeup job i i'm i'm really a fan of the michael doherty krampus design at least for me i really like things to look darker scarier uh, and then different than what we traditionally know something to look like, mm -hmm. um, you know, because it's a little bit of a surprise too. you know, we all like a little bit of a surprise. Um, you know, again, I'm not a huge fan of the makeup as far as all the stories, the ghost one to me seemed like the weakest, yeah. um, you know, or it seemed like something I may have been flipping channels and I hit channel five and then CW comes on and there's this, uh, uh, what is it? A prequel to something that they had, uh, Halloween ish. And it's like rated G, maybe PG. That one maybe a little bit further deeper, PG thirteen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah, it had a big like. This could have like that whole thing could have been an episode of Supernatural, and nobody would have blinked twice. Oh yeah, and was this you know. movie rated? Is this a PG thirteen? No. If it um, is, then they they got away with murder because there's a little bit of stuff in there well, that's kind of yeah, like, literally. Ooh. But yeah, no. So it it's is. Not our, yeah, rated on IMDb. Dude, there was one, you know me, I'm always going to point out all the porno stuff. Uh, there was one part where the little kid was in the bed and I was like, I hope that's a stepson. I'm like, oh God, yeah. 
that was where it was like i was like i wish you guys would just stick to like not <laughs> doing that you know yeah. Keep it classy, San Diego. Well, that was that was why at the end of that story arc, the changeling gave the child back was because the changeling liked the mom because the mom took care of it no matter like she knew that that was not her son and she still protected and took care of it. So that was like that exchange of like, you never touch me anymore. I'm gonna go drink beer. And she was like frustrated. And he was like, hey, let me go ahead and help this yeah, lady out. Yeah, yeah like, <laughs> I'll touch pretty you. cool, <laughs> ma'am. It was a little too much. Yeah, and they didn't have to give the kid back in his underpants either. Like, you yeah, know yeah I mean? that there was could... a little odd. Just what, what did they do to the boy? Do a, do a, cloth- a clothing swap inside the tree. I'm good with that. Just, you know. Get... <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, when I saw him come yeah. out in his underwear, I was like, what? Yeah. I love the fact that the changeling, the Fae was like, okay, I'll give you him back, but I kind of like this warm clothes. Yeah, I'm keeping his clothes. Bitch, I'm keeping this. (laughs) Imagine if he did come out with his regular clothes on and some like over analytical film viewer is just like, that's a plot hole. How did he get more clothes? You know, I could see, I don't see anyone doing that is what I'm saying. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, you know, I will say out of all the stories, you know, them having uh let's see here you know the zombies the krampus the ghost story and the changeling my favorite would be the zombies and then where that ended up i really i really of all of them i like that the most uh, zombies. Not, the yeah the little elf zombies oh the elf okay yeah, yeah the elf okay. zombies yeah, yeah. I, I really yeah, like they had some yeah. really good like campy lines like there was that just before twinkle i don't remember what his name was sparkle <laughs> chopped his hand when he called mrs claus a and i quote reindeer fucking snow whore i was like oh my god <laughs> oh no yeah and that's and that because because of that and like the little other things right in here. there yeah you know you get the you get the uh, horror christmas feels there what, what i liked about that is i wanted more because even in the movie uh scrooge with bill murray they have a trailer for like a fake Santa uh, action movie where he's just killing the shit out of terrorists with his elves and Mrs. Claus and they got big fucking guns. I- I've always wanted something horror wise where Santa is just like this fucking badass who just kicks the shit out of everything and things die because Santa's just, a, you know, an action star waiting to happen. <laughs> Dude, but tell me that show off between Krampus and Santa Claus turning into an actual Mortal Kombat yeah. scene. That was like, cool. that was great. No, yeah, I that was, was cool. like, all what... I, I was just expecting the dun 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 Like, they had the chain. We were looking in. for that the whole the whole episode. I mean, the whole movie, we were looking for that. Um, <laughs> yeah, it all was, like, building up to that, right? Yeah. Um, like the we have this tonight. Cool. Stefan, to your point, uh, I okay, my least favorite... Um, like design, uh, costume design or makeup was the little, uh, the changeling's troll version. Ah, yeah. I was yeah. like, what? He looked like he belonged in the Star Wars cantina. It was just like, <laughs> is this, it's a Jawa. <laughs> this Hall- yeah. uh, Halloween headquarters mask. Yeah, this is like so cheap. I didn't mind it as much. I kind of wish they would have gone a little bit more with it because like changelings are ugly and they mimic children for a reason, you mm-hmm. know? They want yeah. the human pleasures, but they they they're ugly. They're not cute. I will say the glowing eyes, though, that was a nice touch. I like the I glowing eyes, yeah. especially when they when he's just like a silhouette and his eyes are all like. You know? Oh yeah, at the end of the hallway, that was that was good. the best. Yeah, that was that was the that at its best. I think was him like crawling around the ceiling with just glowing eyes staring at you to and me, stuff like that. To me, Murder. that was too yeah. tropey. The, the, the ceiling crawl, it was just a, too much, like, you don't need that. And I don't, so when, where do they get anti-gravity powers? I don't, like, that's sci-fi. Why, why can they crawl on ceilings all of a sudden? I don't, I don't know. Because they're fae, they're magic. Don't invest. They do whatever the fuck they want. And see, and that's, that's one of the, well, that's one of the things where uh, this movie would have done better to show less of its creatures and have more suspense and give less of uh, visuals on certain things. Because some of the things, yeah, the looks, the makeup granted it probably didn't have the biggest of budgets so i'll give them that so they get an a plus for effort but uh i think this is one of those kind of like jaws where some things shouldn't have worked uh so that way uh the less is more could come into effect and the movie could have been better because i think this would have been scarier if we saw less being that they couldn't afford to make things look good <laughs> yeah 
Uh, one more opinion. thing. <laughs> one more thing that bugged me, uh, especially the like, just in general, like it seems like people in horror movies never have any life skills. You know, like this oh this God. family got their their car stuck in the snow, and they're like, "Let's walk for miles in the freezing snow at nighttime instead." That's better, <laughs> right? And there's like. They weren't even trying to put like sticks under the tires so it can get out of the snow, like any of that stuff. And then these morons in the basement, they couldn't get through a wooden door because they had the wrong key. They're like, we just have to sleep in this basement overnight with with ghosts. It wasn't even overnight. It was Christmas break. So who knows when that fucker like came back. The principal, he could have been gone for a whole week. They would have died. Basement was full of so much like just heavy objects and metal that you could just bust through a wooden door, you know, like they could have made it something where it was a little bit more on lockdown. Like it was a metal door, whatever. I don't know. It just, that bugs me when it's like, Oh, just, I had the same issue with the changeling plot when like, it's the fact that most people they're like, you know what, you know, what's, it's strange that our child doesn't need their inhaler that he literally stabbed his father with a fork and he's he's hasn't said a word since we got him back but mm-hmm. oh that's just our kid like something's obviously wrong and yeah. they both just like well this is just he's traumatized from being lost in the woods for five whole minutes and it's like it's one of those things where they pushed it like what was happening to the child and them involved in the child was very concerning and very alarming and shit was wrong they didn't take him to the hospital they didn't try to do any of that but the fact that something odd may be going on they were like no something any hint of like supernatural or something weird they were just like oh out the window yeah the 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 guy was like there's something wrong with your kid and they're they're like we don't believe you he just stabbed my husband with a fork (laughs) he's an angel angel. he's an angel he wouldn't hurt anybody the fact that he was like have has he been acting a little different and she was just like don't call here again it's Define like different. what are yeah. you doing <laughs> yeah I, I said that to my wife and i said the same thing and she's like um she's like well would you believe somebody if that happened you know i'm like if you stab me with a fork for no reason yes i would be i would consider it yeah i would too it's a very yeah. concerning thing to happen i'd be like wait you know there's something wrong here okay that confirms that yeah. there's something wrong here did you hear yeah. about the fork yeah <laughs> well not only that the homie ate what like a whole bucket worth of spaghetti like yeah. <laughs> he just kept eating like a garbage truck dude i'd be like yo you can eat all the dinner man he what's wrong with you spaghetti so i think you're overestimating this he watches <laughs> eight mile a lot mom's yeah. spaghetti just hits the spot but i, I told you know I, he's a changeling because he's watching eight mile and he's like okay that's weird <laughs> all right guys <laughs> that's odd listen gun I, to your head what's the rating system on this movie I'll, I'll go last you want to go last okay, okay. Oh, yes. i'll go first because i'm gonna give this four out of five stars it gave yeah it yeah, y'all may, y'all may be looking at me like I'm crazy, but hear me out. Uh huh. It was fun. <laughs> it was fun. Was it the best campy movie? No. But did they hit? Mo- it was like a it, in the ballpark area. It was like a C in the campy area because camp is really hard to do, mm-hmm. and it's really hard to get right. But for the most part, I wasn't bored during the entire thing, I was entertained. I didn't pull out my phone once, I was invested. And then that plot twist at the end, I was like, this sold me, this mm-hmm. sold me, this sold me, I like this movie. So yep, yeah, I'm gonna stick with my four out of five stars. Four stars, okay, Heather? Um. Well, first of all, there's no <laughs> boobs anywhere in the movie. Yes, thank you, Heather, thank you. There's- so that's- we- Sin number one, you guys know how I feel about movies without boobs in them. Yeah. Um, number two. We got close though, right? No. Almost, but not no cigar. Number two, William Shatner did not die. And that really needed to happen for me to buy this movie because yes. I don't like William Shatner. If you guys want me to explain why I don't like him, he's a bad person. And I think that should kind of summarize it. He's just a piece of shit in real life and I don't like him. And and so the fact that I didn't get to watch him die horribly just made it not that great of a movie for me. 
despite all of the things that I did like about it, I just can't get over the fact that William Shatner survived. I really wanted to watch him get his like head split open by his Trump. up and comings. I really yeah, he, needed that. He wasn't even put in any sort of peril, like moral danger. You know, it was probably in his contract. It would have given me such catharsis to watch William Shatner die horribly after watching all of the fucking horrible things that he said in public recently. You know what I mean? So I would have been on board. Um, but I, it didn't. So even that amazing plot twist with the Santa story did not get me because of the fact that William Shatner didn't die. I give it, I'm going to give it an okay score though. I'm not going to give it like zero across the board. I'll give it two and a half stars. It's a definitely a medium movie. All right, okay. uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna park it right in the middle at three stars. This it, it was like entertaining. You guys are very generous. Full of flaws, um, but in the end, like it, it was worth watching. You know what I mean? There were some good redeeming qualities, especially the ending. And I, if somebody said, "Hey, should I watch this?" I'd be like, "Oh, maybe you'd like it." it it's it's not something that's a that's a trash heap that I know nobody will like. You know, if, yeah. for instance, uh, Christina said, hey, should I watch this? I would probably, you know, then then I would have gave her a good recommendation. So it's it's not unredeemable, but um, it's definitely flawed. So I can't give it any more than three. Um, Stefan, hmm. take it away. Well, you know, I mean, my balls in a vice uh, with a shot of vodka sounds more fun. Mm-hmm. um I, I i don't know this is like not a dumpster fire but I, i'd consider it more of a near dumpster fire for me mm-hmm. uh i'm not, I just I, the makeup for me really took me out of it granted again they had a lower budget um it just really felt goosebumps and cw ish and i always yeah. have a problem when i see any horror movie regardless of what uh what the plot is going to be or the story or whoever made it you know um and i see a pg-13 that are like automatically Right. I saw trailer mm-hmm. early trailers, not to get too far off for the remake of Black Christmas 2019. And I was all excited. And then the moment it said PG 13, I was like, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. Right there, you're telling me there's no tits. Uh, there's barely any gore. Uh, and I'm not going to see as much depth as I'd like. You're just going to move the camera away all the time. Nah, not my cup of tea. Um, as far as rating this movie, uh, I will not recommend it. It's kind of like herpes. Uh, I just want to warn people about it so they can stay away. <laughs> wow. I um, like so I feel about a Serbian film. <laughs> well, I recommend that to everybody because those, her- those herpes you want to share. Um, <laughs> a Serbian film is a Christmas movie, but don't watch it. <laughs> oh, I so- love, the movie. love it. I love it. So I guess uh, out of five, I, for me, I'd give it like because I did like the Santa Claus one with the elves and I've always wanted to see someone do something like that because I have a, an amazing idea for a Christmas horror movie, actually a couple of horror movies based on Christmas, but um, I guess I'd give it a half star. Uh, that's, wow. that's Yeah, I, I can't go past that. I just, you know, the thing with them trapped in the basement and then, uh, you know, oh my God, what, what are you doing? It's like, what is he doing? You just hopped on him, lady. <laughs> like yeah. what the fuck is going well, on she was possessed i mean come on um that's how i would react if i got possessed and i woke up sitting on your lap i don't um, know man she didn't she guys, didn't sell it for me i don't know so that's that's still by the way an average score of two and a half stars for this film so if you're listening out there it's still watchable just Ugh. you know it with, depends on your preference with this warning, is really yeah. like a this is a very specific taste sort of mm-hmm horror movie yeah you know and i like campy i just yeah. it just it needed campy more anthology for goofball stuff it's funny um all right guys should we talk about next week's picks yes we should all right i have some for you um and if you want we can watch some trailers um okay oh, yes, so my please. so uh next friday will be new year's eve right or day new, next friday's new year's day yes oh man yes, that is that is a fact okay so, That's gonna uh, be a lively podcast. I got some. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungover right now. I'll probably be the same. So, uh, all right. So I've got some New Year's themed movies um, that are my sick picks. Oh, we should start using that. Should we say sick picks from now on? Sick That's picks, bro. What are your sick picks? Okay. <laughs> so my first sick pick is Lifeblood from 2007. Stop me if you heard it, Stefan. Um. Really? You haven't already? Okay, so let's go to the, let's watch the Lifeblood 
trailer. Have um, you seen this one, Keith? I have. No, um, no, I haven't. I have not. I, wow, I like so to this recommend... is one of the rare ones where no one's seen it. Yeah, I like right? to pick. I like to do picks that I haven't seen. So at least I'm not, you know. Um, so at least I get some new. I get to watch something new, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I only have so many life hours before I die. So, all right, guys. That's uh, been watch TV. Let's pull up the. Uh, let's see here. Okay, all right. Let's press play on the lifeblood trailer. Here. Isn't this exciting? I can't wait to see what's going to happen next. Big wild yeah. things vibe. Already, already won me over. He's <laughs> like, I see boobs. And boobies are, are <laughs> look promising. Oh, hip thing. Okay. This is orange threat level for boobies. Wow, more girls kissing. This is really <laughs> plot. Vibe. This doesn't have a plot. It just has tits <laughs> and chickens. Chickens. I was gonna say that's what got you. Oh, that was no, that was what won me over. I don't know what you guys thought. Who produces Hustler? I was gonna say, is that Hugh Hefner? <laughs> Back no, from I, the grave. I recognize that actor. I forget. Oh, what happened to these? That? Have got to be porn stars, oh, dude. So there's been no sound this whole time. I just want to. <laughs> Oh, really? You couldn't hear the sound? No. <laughs> Big. It started sound. with sound. I'm down, I'm down without sound. It started sound. with sound, yeah. And that sound, the sound I would think... probably ruin it because she was kind of chewing the scenery at the beginning. I was not. Yeah. No, back. this, it's honestly, it's just repeating. This is just a bad video up on YouTube. <laughs> uh, well, it me over, anyways. Uh, yeah, I'm fine that, with that. Uh, okay. So, second Jesus pick Christ. is uh, New Year's Eve. Oh, yeah. I, re- I remember recommending uh, this. 1980. One. So, we'll yeah. play this one. Ooh. You can hear that, right? Yeah. I'm asking you to make a donation right now. One of my favorite uh, distributors. Oh, what? (laughs) I love that play. Okay. <laughs> this looks so trashy. Call me evil. <laughs> I'm here for this. <gasps> this is up my alley. Ladies, cheese, baby. You want cheese? This is some good cheese. What the hell is this? It's a classic, bro. Ooh. <laughs> Jeremy he, in was in <laughs> he was in the oh trash God. like a fucking gremlin this looks like hot trash trash <laughs> fire and a half you know it looks wonderful <laughs> oh she got I a tear she got a tear sound, but I don't want it oh, <laughs> just like shit. the side eye <laughs> look at his what mask bro look at that mask that is not a cute mask. Oh, that blush. That's how they did it in the 80s. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, shit. oh, a quick birthday party. Oh, snap. Yeah, I can't wait to see how she oh, got on that. that actually looks like a kind of cool scene. New Year's Oh, classic baby. Okay, so far, these picks they're really doing it. And my my third, my third, obviously awesome pick is uh, Day Watch. Oh, yeah, Uh, I've seen this. You have okay, Day Watch and Night Watch. Day Man, (laughs) Day Watch is this an old movie? Yeah, this is the prequel to Baywatch. There's two well, movies to this: Day Watch, Day Watch, and Night Watch. This is where we learn why you don't hassle the hop. <laughs> he really just ride through a wall. Yep. He did that. And yet those kids couldn't break out of a wooden door. <laughs> yeah, there's two movies to this. <clears throat> For centuries, that truce has been guarded by the night watch. Yeah, I know this oh. series. Yeah, it's two two movies. 
I mean, no, the book series. If you're going to prevent the war, to end all wars. Yeah, it's a Russian movie. They must find the one thing that can change. A little bit of action. Oh, no, there's a lot of action, bro. Yeah. <laughs> What's the, this reminds me of the, what's the Kate Beckinsale uh, movie series? Oh, Underworld. Yeah, this, getting that kind of vibes from it. Yeah, there's a lot of action like that, yeah. A lot of CGI. Okay. happening but it's a really hard movie to sell trust me and then when you yeah. watch it you'll be like yes i don't know how the hell they fucking made it all right we, we get the gist of it so, uh, <laughs> so those are my picks uh you're welcome first of all uh <laughs> those so are the, great picks the first one um i don't know lifeblood it almost has like a a, a cheap rob zombie kind of vibe to it so, mm. all right, guys, tell me, tell me what you think. Who's hey, Rob Zombie is a little better. <laughs> I'm on a fence between Lifeblood and New Year's Evil. Um, uh-huh. They both look like such hot trash. Uh, <laughs> and I can't, from the trailer, I can't tell which one is a worse movie, you know, but it definitely mm-hmm. looks like we're going to be enjoying some bad movies. I'm going to say Lifeblood. <laughs> yeah. Lifeblood, I was going to say. It almost looks like it might be so bad that it's unwatchable, you know? I looked up the summary for Lifeblood on IMDb, and it's New Year's Eve, 1969. While driving on the Pearl Blossom Highway, a lesbian couple encounters the creator of the universe. Laid to rest for 40 years, the women wake up on New Year's Day as reborn creatures. Holy fuck. Okay, I'm down. Rash. I want to see some les- some evil lesbians murder people. I'm so uh-huh. down for that. I can or- watch this drunk on New Year's Eve. Ugh. I mean, there's also can't get my time back. <laughs> 80s classic where he just he's uh he's gonna commit some murder. Murder, and he's hiding in a dumpster with a lighter. He's doing some business with this the switchblade <laughs> that I'm intrigued to see how far he goes with this switchblade. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm a vote for New Year's Evil. You're a New Year's Evil, Stefan? Oh, all the way. Okay. Uh, what about you, Christina? Where's your vote? Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna. I'm caught between the first one and the second one. Same. I think. You know what? I think I'm gonna go with Lifeblood. Mm-hmm. Oh, poor soul. So I'm tie breaking here, huh? Okay. Oof. Well, how bad do I want to torture Stefan? Let's see. You you said the the word. Um, you said you said a word I didn't like earlier in the podcast. I'm gonna punish you for that. And um, <laughs> I, got a fast, I got a fast forward button, so it's not torture. HR <laughs> department. Plus, I want. I just want to watch some lesbians murder people uh, for yeah. New Year's. I think that would be fun for me. Um, so yeah, well, life flood. I love the cringe on Stefan's face. Life flood. Uh, that's how you I know, felt. That's how, how how you make me feel sometimes, buddy. <laughs> just just so you know, if there was going to be a tie, I think I was going to pick Life Blood as well. So, um, oh, yeah, Life Blood. It is, guys. Two thousand seven, uh, where, where <sighs> lesbians meet the creator of the universe. <laughs> I'm just going to pick. Got me right there. Film. Or we can watch Begotten, and that also is a. Never mind. I'm not going to. I'm saying there's gods in that movie, too, but you wouldn't know it unless you actually like read the summary about it because it's such an abstract movie. Um, But anyways, yeah. okay, Lifeblood. Sounds good. All right. Lifeblood it is, guys. So um, that's in my rating right now. (laughs) (laughs) Like it or not, we're reviewing Lifeblood from 2007 this week. Uh, Yeah. Lifebutts. Guys, so check back uh, next Friday for our New Year's Day review of Lifeblood. And uh, that's been our podcast. So thanks for listening. Is he uh, actually blinding himself right now? You got to go for the ear, so. too. 
Like, keep your eyes open so you can watch the lesbian action. But going that's to have my daughter throw that's acid that's in my eyes. That's just how subjective this shit is. I mean, his his vote was for New Year's Evil, which is like the worst. That was the worst trailer I've ever seen well, for anything. Well, because Nightwatch is not really a horror movie. That's why. Yeah. Well, Otherwise, I would have voted for that one. Um. Yeah, I gotta say, it's hard to find I, New Year's. Eve. No, yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. The 1980s movie is that's gonna be bad. I feel like it's also gonna have bad pacing. But yeah. it's hard for me to tell if from like the whatever the hell that non-trailer was. It's hard for me to tell if if uh, if this one's gonna be so bad it's good or if it's just gonna be so. No, bad. It, I can that, that I movie, can tell. That movie looked like the entire budget hinged on that car hitting that motorcycle. Like that's it. That that's the shot, guys. Make sure we get this. That's it. <laughs> so, it was like yeah. the director's ex ex boyfriend or whatever, and they're just like, yeah, take out his motorcycle. <laughs> no, yeah. When you when you when you put lead actors as porn stars, and they haven't really done anything, you're you're already setting up your whole film for a disaster. Whether that's a male or female porn star. I love I didn't it. Find All right, that guys. Was particularly better in New Year's Evil, especially when the girl was going up the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> That's our podcast. We'll see you next week. Thanks for we'll joining us. We'll see you us. in 2021, y'all. Yeah, this is our last podcast of 2020. First podcast of the new year, if the planet's still here. All right, later. Woo.